Hello, and welcome to uh, David's Game Corner. Uh, we're going to chat about some of the games we uh, played this month. Um, uh, we've been getting together with a group of friends, uh, playing uh, random games. Um, this month, uh, the category I chose was a uh, fanboy, and uh, the object of this uh, is to play three games by the same game company. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do at first, um, but I did decide on um, the game company uh, Naughty Dog. Um, these are the three that I chose. Um, we had The Last of Us. Uh, this one, um, everybody kept saying I needed to play it. Um, and that's kind of what decided um, my game company that I was going to to do my three games in, um, and then I had to think of what I could complement uh, The Last of Us with. Um, so I went uh, one new, one old, um, and we took one from, well, another one from the PS3. Um, I got the remastered version of Uncharted, and uh, we played the second one since last uh, year I played the first one um, and we'll talk about some of the differences with that and my final one was another HD remaster of PS2 game and this is uh, Jack and Dexter um, I played the first one I've never played any of them and uh, so I kinda went in blind uh, to see what we were going to do and my last um, honorable mention, I guess you would call it, game, um, if I got to it, um, was uh, Snake Pass. And uh, this, I downloaded it just uh, on a whim um, to see what it was about, and it was surprisingly one of the best games this month, um, from what I thought. So I'll go ahead and talk about uh, Snake Pass a little bit. It is a 3D platformer with uh, the odd perspective of not being able to jump. Uh, you play as a snake uh, called Noodle with a sidekick called Doodle. Um, the sidekick is a hummingbird. Um, he'll pick up your tail, um, give, me, give you some hints and tips and tricks. Um, and this game is, I guess, kind of a collectathon. Um, you have to go through, there's water droplets that you have to collect, um, there's the harder object uh, to collect is there's five golden coins on the level, these are hidden, um, and then the final thing to collect is uh, it's a yellow, a green, and like a pink uh, orb that allows you to unlock the portal and proceed to the next level. Um, it started out fairly easy um, and as I got to the last uh, two couple of worlds the difficulty kinda racked up there was a lot more puzzles and things of that nature um, I would I would highly recommend giving it a try um, I did play it on the switch and uh, I think it was like 30 30 FPS which didn't really bother me um, there were some I guess when I had it in dock mode, there were some issues with frame drop here and there. Um, it's probably due um, to all the grass and particle effects that were around. Um, this, I believe, is the first Unreal Engine 4 game on uh, the Nintendo Switch. It played played really well, um, but uh, this one I also decided to do a 100% completion. So I beat the game and I believe I was at about 90%. Um, so after you beat the game it gives you this snake sense. Um, you click down on the the right uh, control pad and it'll activate a sense and you can kind of see the glowing objects that you need. It'll allow you to see through walls and things like that. So if you missed anything you can go back and pick it up um, so that's what I did, but I would recommend uh, this game to play. Um, you control, you kind of have to think uh, like a snake 
um, is how the, the de developers describe it, and I would say that is accurate. Um, if you hold down, I believe it's the right trigger, um, that allows your snake to move forward. But if you aren't wiggling back and forth in like a snake pattern, you don't really go anywhere. Um, and you have to coil around uh, trees and bamboo branches and things like that. And all these worlds uh, are floating islands. So as you're curling around different objects and trying to, to grasp and reach the different collectible items, if you let go, you fall, and it responds you back where you were, and you have to pick up the items again if you haven't reached a current save point. And there are little triangles on the ground that allow you to save. Um, it doesn't set you back too far. Um, there's like three, four, maybe five of them, depending on how long the level is. So it f saves fairly often, and if you know you're going to be dangling off a ledge and climbing down through all these different passageways that you could fall. Um, I would always remember to run over the save and then proceed on to collect it. Um, but it was really unique in that it is a platformer that you can't jump in. Um, the platforming involves curling around and traversing different like scaffolding, like different tree branches, and reaching over and grasping onto another branch and trying not to fall um, and you're you're doing this throughout the entire level um, there is a little bit of a story um, to it but nothing too far I won't spoil it or anything like that um, you do get some unlockables uh, if you do uh, do a 100% you do get a unlockable item um, and I did get that um, but yeah I would say I spent maybe eight hours in the game. I didn't really track it. Um, but yeah, I would say it was roughly about eight hours or so um, after I went back and gathered everything and got the 100%. Um, give it a try. If you're thinking about getting it and this tips you over the edge, um, give it definitely give it a try. Um, the second game that I played, and I did a live stream of this um, on Twitch, and I uploaded it to YouTube, um, that was The Last of Us. And this was kind of my defining game for the month. Everybody recommended playing it. Um, I never got around to it, didn't even know the story or what was involved, but one of my friends gave me the PS3 copy and I decided to play it for this month and it was it's a heavy story game um, involves a um, kind of a father figure and a little girl um, she has been bitten by the zombies or whatever you want to call them um, they're people that haven't been ex uh, infected by spores um, causing them to go crazy turn into zombies whatnot um, but there's different groups. There's the Fireflies, which you're trying to get to. There's um, kind of like a military group um, that is also after you. It took me a little bit uh, to get used to the controls. And playing Uncharted 1 the previous year, uh, a lot of the controls were the same. Um, and after I got into the flow, everything started progressing a lot easier. Um, it goes through different story points and... Then you'll get into like a combat area, and some of these combat areas can be rather rough. Um, you have to use a mixture of stealth um, as well as uh, you have bombs you can craft, you have smoke uh, screens that you can craft if they're shooting at you with bullets. Um, there's a couple different types of the zombies. There's what's called a clicker, which is kind of a fully... I guess you would say evolved zombie. Um, these have no ability to see, but they can hear. Um, they click to kind of, like a, I guess it would be echolocation or something like that, but they can't see you. So you make noise, they can pick up on it, they come to your location, and it's basically instant death if they get a hold of you. There's like the big brother variant of that, which shoots spores out, and again, if he gets you, there's a couple of brutal death scenes where I first encountered him, and he grabs you, and he kind of grabs your jaw and rips your jaw in half. Uh, so that, that's pretty brutal. Um, 
but this was a good game as well. Um, like I said, it's heavy, heavy on the story. Um, the emotional uh, kind of pulls at your emotion strings. Um, but yeah, it involves uh, yeah, escorting a girl through various events um, and trying to get her to the scientist to um, drop her off as like a cure to the zombies. There is, I guess, a hard choice at the end. Um, I won't spoil it or anything, uh, but for those of you that watch me play it and know what it is, you don't per se have a choice, but your character chooses, and uh, it definitely sets it up for the next game that's, I think, coming out this year or maybe next year. Um, but Last of Us was a good game. I enjoyed the story. I think it took me 18 hours or so to beat it, and uh, like I said, you can see it all on my Twitch channel, um, or you can see it on my YouTube. I've got every part of it uploaded, so if you haven't gone through it and you want to watch it, um, I do do recommend watching it. did have a few technical difficulties while recording that with my internet company, which should hopefully be fixed in the next uh, few months. Um, but uh, I ended up getting a HDMI bypass, so the first couple of episodes are not as high quality, but once I got the HDMI bypass and was able to record HDMI footage, um, it did get a lot better. Made things surprisingly much easier to see. Um, recording through the component cables, um, if it was like a dark area, it kind of looked like the gain was like cranked way up where it kind of created a haze and you couldn't see. I tried turning the gain down, turning it up, I just couldn't see, but once I did the HDMI, um, it definitely helped out the quality and allowed you to see uh, a lot of stuff a lot easier. Um, and then our last game was the first Jack and Daxter, and I picked this up as a PS3 remaster. Um, this one I wanted to visit one of their older games uh, that the company was known for and um, I had no idea what it was uh, growing up. Um, I didn't play any PlayStation games. I had a Nintendo and I had a Nintendo 64 and that was all all that I had. So I skipped everything that was on PlayStation unfortunately. Um, and Jack and Daxter I heard good things about. Um, I didn't look up too much about the game, I just kind of ordered it and said, hey, we'll play it, see what it is. And I guess out of the group of games, this is the one that kind of disappointed me. Um, I, Like I said, I, I kind of knew a little bit about it, but I knew, you know, you're, you're, I watched, I guess, the intro. And it's like your sidekick gets thrown into this pit of black ooze. Um, I forget what they call it. But uh, it transforms him into this little squirrel that's on his shoulder. And he's kind of the comedic uh, value in the game. You die, he kind of hovers over your face and gives little uh, snipey remarks about why you died and things like that. And I enjoyed his lines. Um, I guess the thing that uh, disappointed me is it plays a lot like Mario 64. It is a, a collection game of the sorts. Uh, so if I compare it to Mario 64, you had the different stars that you had to get in each level. So you would enter the level, it would be like, okay, you have to go kill the big bomb on top of the castle, and it would kind of give you a pan out kind of show you where to go and be like, okay, to get the star, you kill this guy on the top of the mountain. Easy enough. Um, and this one did nothing like that. Um, it's, I guess you would call it a seamless world hidden, like, behind roadblocks. Um, you had to collect things that were like the stars um, to get past the roadblock. So in the first level, it's like, hey, bring me, I don't remember the number, but something like 15 of these items, and it will unlock this hovercraft, and you can glide across the lava now, and you're in the second level. So the cool thing about the game is 
like Mario, um, instead of having all of the levels spread out and you had to enter here, you come out to overworld, you enter here. This is a seamless world and you make progression as you go. I guess what disappointed me about it is that it felt like it was really trying to emulate the feel of Mario, but without any guidance. It was like it threw you into a place and you can get every single collectible in the first go. You, you, there's no like jumping into the picture and like okay you have to get this one then it kicks you out you go back in it's like okay you have to get this one this one kind of throws you into a world and you randomly explore and you find what you're looking for and I guess that's what disappointed me is there was no I mean yes it did give you the option to explore and find these things but a lot of times I didn't feel that way um, I felt like it needed to give you some type of direction or show you something that you were going for, um, something that you were trying to achieve, and it didn't do that for me. Um, I mean, it wasn't a bad game, I just felt like there wasn't a direction. It would just throw you into the next area, and it'd be like, okay, you need 45 of these things to get to the next area. It didn't matter how you got them. Um, other points that's like Mario is you have to collect all of these um, items. It's like the 100 coins. You collect all of those and then you turn it into, it's like 100 or 150. You turn it into a statue, it gives you one of your key items. Um, the other thing is like the 8 red coins. Um, you had to find seven of these objects. Once you found seven of them, it gave you a star. Um, so it was felt like it was heavily influenced by like the Mario game, and it tried to capture the same feeling, but I felt that it failed. Um, I don't know if it's that the worlds weren't interesting or there wasn't a huge variety. But I played it the first day, and I was like, okay, I understand what it's trying to do. Um, and then I made it into the second world, and it was like I was starting over again. And it was like, uh, do I really have to go and collect these things and give it to the professor, get to the next level? And then it starts over again. It didn't feel like a constant progression of getting somewhere. Um, which is, I guess, probably why I felt disappointed in it. It wasn't wasn't bad. It just was, I guess, mediocre. Um, and I would have, like, in Mario 64, I had the want to go get all the stars, the 120 stars. I I wanted to go back into the levels and traverse and and get all of those. Um, this one, it's like. Basically, you have four levels, and that's that's it. Um, there, the variation just wasn't there, and yeah, it's like you collect collect the coins, get a star. Um, except it was not rewarding. Um, I guess is how I'm putting it. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I wanted to like the game. I did in the end, um, as I got towards the end, like it, I had the drive to keep going, but the middle part where it just felt like it kept resetting over and over, um, and that was, I guess, unfortunate. But yeah, there's like four or five levels, I don't remember exactly how many of them, um, and it's collect five stars, or I guess they're called... What are they called? Um, I don't remember what they're called, but yeah, you collect them, you get enough of them, you turn it into the professor, you move to the next area. And there's a little bit of story behind it. Um, basically, two of the professor's pupils have gone rogue and started messing each of the areas up. Um, and there's a boss, occasional boss battle in each area. 
that you have to do. Um, the one that I found entertaining was uh, in the lava level. Um, you had to kind of fight um, and traverse, jump back and forth across different platforms and beat them. Um, that one was fun, and the very last boss was fun. Um, but yeah, overall, it's an okay game. I know that they changed the like the genre of it through like Jack and Dexter 2 and 3, which are both on this. So I may revisit and kind of see how it progresses. But the first one, I wanted more, um, more depth, um, which it didn't have. No, no general. Okay, here's some guidance. You're kind of going this way. It just didn't didn't do it for me, and it's unfortunate. But those were the games that I played this month. Um, I didn't do any streaming of the Jack and Dexter. Um, I did a little bit of Snake Pass, which is on my channel. The entire playthrough of Last of Us is available, and. Um, Uncharted 2, um, I didn't, no, I didn't record any footage in that, um, I just kind of played it. Um, one of the other, um, guys that's playing with us also played, uh, Last of Us, or not Last of Us, <laughs> Uncharted, uh, 2, and I kind of talked with him about the differences uh, between Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2. Uncharted 1 had some... The, the gunplay wasn't very good. The melee attacks weren't good. The platforming was janky and wasn't all that great in 1. In 2, I felt like they resolved all of those issues. The hand-to-hand -hand combat felt really good. Um, the gunplay felt good. About the same type of guns in the first one and the second one, little changes here and there, but it the guns felt good. Um, the platforming was so much better. Um, you didn't like jump towards the ledge and it just randomly doesn't grab onto it like it did in the first one, so that made it more enjoyable to play. They do still have some of the action sequences if you remember, like Crash Bandicoot, where something's chasing you, you don't really know where you're going. And it's like a trial and error, and you eventually make it to the end. There was a couple of those. I didn't have too much of a snag on those. Um, there were some pretty pretty tough gun battles where you're fighting 20, 30 guys, and you're just kind of going through that. A lot of places you could do stealth, which wasn't good in the first game, but it's pretty good in this game. You can sneak up, you grab them, it gives you items for killing them in stealth, like extra grenades. That was a, a good game. I, I do recommend Uncharted 2. Um, and I hope that they continue to get better. I have the third and the fourth game. I just have to play them still. Um, but Uncharted 2 was a good game. And they made vast improvements over the first game. And just made it better. The story was good. Um, it led to... I guess you can kind of believe the story like this could happen Indiana Jones stuff um, is basically how it plays out you're looking for this lost temple you're solving puzzles throughout every chapter that leads you closer and closer to the temple you make it to the temple and uh, you beat the boss and save the girl and it's done it was I like the story so I would say definitely definitely play Uncharted 2 Last of Us was really good, Snake Pass was good, and the Jack and Daxter, the first one, is kind of, eh. Give it a try if you like to collect things. Um, if there's anybody that played it and thinks I'm completely wrong, and it's a great game, I know there's those people too. Um, but unfortunately, it felt exactly like a Mario game, like a Mario 64, without the depth. Um... Camera angles were definitely better better than Mario 64, but it did have its issues. Um, the can some of the camera angles were bad. The platforming in the, the it's an early platformer 3D. The platforming was kind of bad in it. 
there was no guidance in the story, but yeah, you, you heard me talk about it already. But those were the games. Um, I will probably do this for each month as we play our different games and maybe continue it for games that I play that aren't included in this. But uh, if you're interested, we have lots of people streaming. Um, just go to our Facebook group, that's uh, NFGL, it's National Fantasy Gaming League, and we compete against each other for points. And uh, kind of at the end, uh, kind of tally those points up, see who the winner is, see who the loser is. We've got uh, high point challenge, like high game point challenge uh, through each month. Um, unfortunately, the time that I had didn't allow me to play that, um, so um, I do want to participate in those more. Uh, I just didn't get around to it this month. I don't have all that much free time, and I did luckily beat all of my games, which I haven't done in a while. Um, but yeah, that's the first episode, and uh, hopefully this helps. Hopefully I get a little bit better with this. This is just kind of a one-off take. I'm not doing any editing. So it might be rough around the edges, but hey, we're just talking, chatting about our game experiences. Let me know in the comments what you think, and uh, we'll continue this uh, for episode two next month. Uh, look for that, and uh, until next time, we'll see you then.